Hello everyone and welcome to Without Paddles. Alright, after watching a fair amount of Apex guides, I have to confess that I'm baffled by the advice in some of these guides. I'm by no means a pro or a hardcore player, but I play 3-5 to five games per day and once I stopped listening to most of the advice in most Apex guides, I began to win more games. As a matter of fact, I have some tips that directly contradict some of the advice in many of the Apex guides I've found online. One advice that will result in you and your team quickly getting wiped out is Jump out as soon as possible, acquire a gun, and prepare to fight. This is utterly moronic. The point of the game is not to get 50 kills per game. The point is to be the last team standing. So instead of jumping off the ship immediately, Wait a few seconds, and then pick a spot where no one else has jumped to. You're not a streamer, you don't have to entertain the masses with their 360 no-scope shots across the map. Land in a secluded area and arm yourself and your teammates, so that you can be better prepared for an engagement with another team. Okay, so another popular advice that you should not listen to is, team composition doesn't matter. This is by far the most absurd and detrimental advice in any type of guide. This isn't a solo game, so team composition absolutely matters. You should pick characters that facilitate a specific game plan, or characters with abilities that synergize well together. My team consists of Bloodhound, Bangalore, and Wraith. I'll explain our game plan and how we use our abilities to consistently win games later in the video. Another profoundly silly advice is to look quickly and move on from the area. Alright, this advice has some merit, but it implies that you should just grab whatever's at hand and leave items that can potentially be lifesavers for the sake of speed. You should only sacrifice equipment for speed if you're playing with random people and there are no designated roles in your team. My team and I sometimes linger in the area after a gunfight for a few minutes, depending on the round. The reason we can do this is that there is a firm understanding that if we stray too far away from each other, we can't support one another with our abilities or firepower, thus making us significantly weaker than when we're together. So we just don't stray far from each other when looting. After every gunfight, we loot and we try and stay close to each other. Even when one of our teammates is done looting, he doesn't just simply run away to the next area looking for enemies to kill or loot to collect. He stays in close proximity looking out for other teams trying to sneak up on us or oblivious enemies in the area. No one leaves the area until we're done looting. Also, since we're constantly talking and communicating, we know which weapon we all prefer. We can ping the loot in a death box that other team members may need. This greatly reduces our looting time, but we still make sure that we all get what we need before moving on. Alright, here's another one. This is more of a matter of playstyle than bad advice, but just because you spot an enemy, it doesn't mean you and your entire team need to frantically run and chase it like a pack of hungry hyenas. <laughs> this is probably the Call of Duty mindset. The ADD run and gun, must have kills 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 kind of player, who cares more about getting a kill than actually winning. Remember, the point is to be the last team standing, not the team with the most kills. So even if you or one of your teammates spots an enemy, you should only engage if you have a tactical advantage. Nothing annoys me more when I'm playing with randoms than when they shoot at an enemy that's 10 miles away, failing to land most of the shots, but they happen to alert everyone and their mother of our location. So now that I've covered some advice that you should not follow, here's what has been working for my team. We used Bloodhound, Bangalore, and Wraith, and we're going to go over all three of them. Bloodhound. Bloodhound is the tip of the spear for our team. He's the one leading the pack when we're moving into shady territory since his passive ability allows him to see if players have been in an area recently, how long ago, or if they're still in the area. Bloodhound's job in the team is also to be the first one to rush the enemy when we set up an ambush. Our Bloodhound is usually armed with a full auto prowler for close quarters combat and with a spitfire for longer engagement. Wraith Wraith is our guerrilla and logistics specialist. When we know enemies are in the area and we need to traverse open terrain with little to no cover, 
Wraith can safely transport the entire team across the field in an instant. The fact that Wraith knows when she's being aimed at is also an incredibly useful tool. Knowing if the enemy has spotted us or not allows us to either maintain the element of surprise for an ambush, to set up a defensive position and prepare for a fight if we have been spotted but still have a tactical advantage, or to retreat if we're at a disadvantage. Due to Wraith's tactical making her immune to all gunfire, she also rushes along Bloodhound during ambushes. Our Wraith is usually armed with a Peacekeeper and a Carbine as a secondary. Bangalore Bangalore's job, my job, is to provide support for Wraith and Bloodhound, run interference, revive teammates, and lay down suppressive and effective fire. I usually carry a Spitfire with any other secondary. Okay, so what's our game plan? Well, we're trying to be the last team standing, so that means when we initially jump from the ship, our landing spot is ideally a place no one else has landed in. That way, we can arm ourselves properly for combat. If we find any armor or shields, the highest level always goes to Bloodhound since it's his job to lead the charge whenever we attack another team. The second highest armor goes to Wraith, since it's also her job to rush the enemy. And the third highest comes to me, Bangalore. I came up with this priority system based on the exposure to danger each of us face. We also have a priority system for weapons. The Prowler with full auto mod goes to Bloodhound, the Peacekeeper goes to Wraith, and the Spitfire comes to Bangalore. It doesn't matter if any of us is only left with a Mozambique. We trade the designated weapon to the designated person, and we keep whatever that person was using for primary if we don't have any other weapon. Another essential aspect of our game plan is, we don't engage an enemy if we don't have to. We don't engage unless we have the element of surprise, a geographical advantage, or any other advantage that's going to tilt the outcome in our favor. We're vultures. If two teams are fighting each other, we'll observe and wait until one of the two teams fighting has been eliminated. At that moment, we'll rush the surviving team while they're still weakened and probably distracted looting the death boxes. Yes, we are supreme vultures. Now, engagements. Ideally, we should fight other teams fair and square and may the team with the most head clicks win. But screw that. Both Bloodhound and Wraith are fairly good when it comes to head clicks. Me? Not so much. <laughs> but even if two team members are good, there's no guarantee that they'll succeed in every encounter. Especially with the randomness of armor and weapons in a battle royale. So how do we improve our chances? How do we give already good players an edge over other players that may have better weapons, better armor, and in rare cases also more skill? That's where Bangalore comes in. Smoke grenades are by far the most useful ability in Bangalore's toolkit. As a matter of fact, the whole plan of attack and team composition is based on Bangalore's smoke grenade. At the beginning of every ambush, we position ourselves as close to the enemy as possible without being noticed. Bloodhound marks a spot and immediately starts rushing the enemy with Wraith. As soon as the rush starts, Wraith leaves one end of a portal in a safe location behind cover. The second I see the marked spot, I shoot a smoke grenade at it. Depending where the enemy moves, I'll follow with the second smoke grenade. This creates a huge smoke cloud that blinds almost every hero. Wraith then places the other end of the portal as close to the smoke as possible in a somewhat not obvious location. Before Bloodhound enters the smoke cloud, he activates his super and that allows him to clearly see the enemy through the smoke. After that, it's usually a massacre. <laughs> it doesn't matter how much of an MLG 360 no scope you are, you can't shoot at what you can't see. But in the rare cases where the enemy has a massive shotgun or something ludicrous and Bloodhound or Wraith are weakened, that's why the portals are there. For an easy retreat to heal and rejoin the fight almost immediately. I stay on the other side of the portal and shoot the enemy from a distance. That way, if either Wraith or Bloodhound get downed, I'm ready to revive them as soon as they come through the portal. This game plan has allowed us to win the vast majority of encounters against other teams, even if they're better equipped than us. Because, as I stated earlier, you can't hit what you can't see. <laughs> so, just to recap, Choose heroes with abilities that synergize with each other. Remember, the point of the game is to stay alive, not to get the most kills. 
jump off the ship to a secluded place. And lastly, only engage when you have an advantage. So that concludes our little apex mini guide to get you closer to being the champions. Because we are the champions. No, I'm not, I'm not gonna put you through that, through that torture. So uh, yeah, thank you for watching and uh, hit that like and subscribe button. <laughs> Please be sure to leave comments below if you thought this guide was useful, if it helped you in any way. We'd appreciate any feedback. Alright, so thanks again.